Greetings, today I want to elaborate on the situation of Sweden and in particular we have seen a conflict of sorts arise between angry foreigner and Peter of Sweden and uh, this is sort of like two younger brothers who are fighting with each other and then I am the mature responsible older brother taking them and sitting them down and uh, talking some sense into them so this is a response to both uh, Peter Sweden and to angry foreigner uh, now before I begin even though they aren't fully enlightened true friends who um, acknowledge me as their guiding light, uh, they are still two brave sons of modern Europe, and even if they haven't gone beyond the pale when it comes to the JQ and race, etc., they've still gone far enough to become public enemies, and we should all respect them for it. So, as always, to all of my supporters, First Legion, we're up here, everyone else is down there, so keep it clean, classy, eloquent and respectful in the comment section, uh, as is appropriate. So show these two gentlemen uh, respect for the good work they have done. Now, I'm gonna start with the video Angry Foreigner did, uh, and I like the video. You could have done without some of the ad hominems, but I like the video because you present the more reasonable view of Sweden than the usual um, alarmist, um, ultra-dramatic rhetoric. So I like that, and I like the anti-defeatist attitude you have, Angry Foreigner. And then, as I said to you, I was also very impressed by your uh, performance uh, debating my good friend, uh, the hero, Chris Dalny. Uh, I can link that debate below, it's in Swedish, but uh, if you understand Swedish, I can definitely recommend you to check that out. Now, obviously, I think um, my man, the hero, Christopher Dalny, had the sharper arguments, but you definitely brought some good insights to everyone who listened to it. So, tips pickle how to you, angry foreigner. Uh, now, on to Peter Sweden. Uh, some, some advice for you, some uh, insights for you. I've said this to you before, I respect your work, but I don't really appreciate your sometimes defeatist attitudes. So when you tweet out, it's lost for Sweden. There is no hope for Sweden. It's best to just abandon her. Uh, I mean, first of all, that's absolutely not true. There is plenty of hope for Sweden if you look at it in an objective manner. Don't get me wrong, we have tremendously much hard work to do and uh, we have many obstacles uh, facing us but I mean it's absolutely not too late and it's not really useful at this particular point in time to say especially to these younger guys who perhaps are not in a good position in life uh, they might lash out and do something stupid because they don't see a, a bright future I'm working as hard as I can to portray a good vision a good bright future for these young men to participate in so it's not really useful when you're counter signaling my uh, teachings here by saying it's hopeless and i'm sure you understand this and i'm saying this because i do believe that you have the heart on the right place peter sweden uh, i definitely do and as i said i respect the good work you've done in bringing light to some of the things that are going on in sweden but what you need to do is that you need to bring light to these issues, but you don't need to say that it's hopeless, because it's not. You must have this sort of attitude, okay, these, okay lads, these are the sort of obstacles we're facing, now it's fucking go time, now let's smash these obstacles and go forward. That is how you approach this, this is not time to say, oh, these obstacles are too high and too hard for us, so we can never overcome them. That is not a very glorious attitude at all, so that is why some people are a bit mad at you at the moment because you harbor these sort of defeatist attitudes. Uh, so change that and uh, you will be more well liked, I am absolutely certain. Now, moving on to another very important topic and that is being completely intellectually honest at all times. Now, when someone says there is a huge rape epidemic in Sweden, Yes and no. Uh, if you ask me, I'm gonna say, has the has rapes increased in Sweden since the introduction of the Multicultural Health Project? Yeah, definitely, they have. Uh, is the Swedish rape statistics congruent with reality or congruent with most people's perception of what a rape is? Uh, no. Uh, so it depends on how you look at it. Uh, you can study this further, but there is a problem uh, with sexual violence aimed at uh, women going alone at night, for example. And uh, I would definitely not let any woman of mine go through um, any city um, drunk, uh, half drunk in the middle of the night. 
that's just a stupid thing to do. Uh, so, I mean, yes, things have become a colder and more insecure society, definitely. But the rape statistics, they aren't true for most people, because most people wouldn't say that these sort of things are rape, and they would be they would wonder how this sort of statistics were were done. So uh, there is a problem, but it is not as big of a problem as someone might interpret. Uh, moving on, uh, if you say like, oh, is civil war imminent in Sweden? I'm not saying that you said that, Peter, but if you utilize that sort of rhetoric, you portray an, you portray a picture of Sweden that it would be very, very chaotic and it is not the case. So if an American guy comes over during the summer now to Stockholm or an Australian guy comes over and says like, oh, this is a really, this is a very beautiful, white uh, and nice city. And then they say, oh, but I've heard so much bad about Sweden that it was supposed to be civil war now. And then they see this calm and collected uh, city. It's the, the levels of trust these onlookers have for people like you, it will decrease. To take an example, like uh, I was in London 2012, uh, compare that to Stockholm in 2018. London is not a white city, Stockholm is still a white city. Uh, there's a huge difference there and um, we need to be honest with what is going on. Because if we're not honest, if, if there would be civil unrest in 10 years time, and I said that, then I obviously need to be absolutely certain that the individuals who are listening then who would potentially come over to help as volunteers, then I want them to trust me. So then I can't say right now to gain additional support like, oh, we're about to uh, have a civil war because that's not true. And then I've used that trust already. So we need to be intellectually honest at all times. We need to talk about these issues that are facing us, but we need to do so in a intellectually honest manner because otherwise you will have spent all of your trust until um, perhaps something chaotic happens. Now, back to angry foreigner. I would just like to say that if you don't view it as a problem with the decadent and degenerate side of our uh, predicament, then you are blind to basically half of the problem. Uh, the Multicultural Hell Project and Mass Immigration, it didn't just arrive out of the blue. Uh, the first step that the great enemy, if you will, uh, did was introduce this sort of very subversive ideologies, such as ultra hedonistic liberalism. I just made that up. That was supposed to be in place before the multicultural mass immigration came to be. Uh, if you don't recognize that decadence, the attack on the nuclear family, the attack on the morals of society, and the uh, reduction of higher metaphysical values if you don't appreciate that it will be hard to see the whole problem uh, that we're facing so it's not just that oh a lot of people with different with different ethnicities and religion are coming in we also have a problem within our own society uh, that needs to be addressed and uh, i haven't really seen that from you yet so i hope you will delve deeper into that in the coming time and yeah definitely you have the heart on the right place and you've done great work for the for the cause so i have respect for you and i hope you will go further along the path of enlightenment and also hope that you will embrace me as your guiding light maybe i'm hoping for too much but you never know anyway so to conclude the situation in sweden we have massive challenges ahead and uh, i am 100 percent confident in the swedish people uh, and when i say our and swedish people this applies to all of the west because it's one global struggle basically it's just certain things look a bit different in different nations and also one thing i can say which is the absolute worst in sweden so i said that we are in a better position than many other western nations one thing that we're absolutely worst in that is the levels of feminist indoctrination in our women that is a um, major concern so uh, especially among the a bit older women like 40 to 50 or something they are quite hopeless indeed i'm sorry to say but anyway i hope that was um brought some new insights to you and yet again to peter sweden and uh, angry foreigner uh, i like you both uh, keep up the good work but uh, but keep in mind that we must also be intellectually honest. XXO. Boom.